Mountain bikers, this video is for you if you wanna do big jumps, big drops, but it's a bit terrifying for you. I'm gonna show you in one practice session how you can go from a little bit terrified, maybe a little bit sketchy on these jumps and drops to having more control, more a sense of kind of what to do. And even if you're a little bit off or if the trail is something new that you're not used to, you're still gonna be able to pull this off. And the reason why I'm making this video is very simple. There's a lot of videos already made about what to do and technique and, and all those are good things, but no one really talks about the inner game of how to achieve these things and bring that inner game into the real world. So I'm gonna bring that down to you in a couple different steps. And again, my name is David Davidson. I'm the co-founder of Mountain Bike Academy and I'm on a mission to help a million riders shred with confidence. Let's go. So first of all, the thing I wanna share with you that's most important for jumps and drops is we've gotta use the torso and two tire method. Now, what is the torso two tire method? It's very simple. If you put the torso where it needs to be on the lander of a drop or the lander of a jump and the two tires land at about the same time, then even if you're a little sideways or if you came into that jump or drop a little bit off, you're going to be able to save it pretty much no matter what. So in other words, it's the safest, most reliable and simplest way to think about landing a jump or a drop. So most of the guides that I've seen and most of the guides you're gonna get out there are going to show you again, you know, kind of what to do with your body position. And the first thing we need to do is we actually need to drop body position completely because it's not the thing that's gonna help you the most. What I suggest is moving from the inside out. And when I mean inside out, I mean, what does it feel like in the body to initiate a movement when we're out on the trail? So this is what allows me and, and the riders that I work with to basically kind of go out and be like the riders you see on Red Bull Rampage and, you know, doing stuff on social media that you think is cool. If you want to move towards that, then you have to be able to kind of create the feeling and create the thing that you want to do. And it doesn't, it's not as far out there as it sounds. So really what we want to do first is you've got to go and find a simple practice area. And the first two steps that you need to get dialed in before you do any kind of jumping is you got to go through a little bit of ground school. Now, first, what we got to do is work on some timing. So if you want to land your drops and land them safely down here on the ground, or you want to land your jumps down here safely on the ground, how you start things before you get into the air is what matters. Okay, let me say that again. If you want to land safely down here on the lander, how you start before you get in the air is the thing that matters the most, period. And if you are going in the right trajectory in the air, that eliminates a lot of the fear that you're feeling and a lot of the, you know, just kind of discomfort when you're out on the trail and you're trying to impress yourself or impress your riding buddy. What we need to do is, again, create a feeling this feeling is the initiation of a move so that we can land safely on the drop or the jump. And the first thing we need to be able to do is apply pressure to initiate this movement, okay? So if you're on a jump, what you're doing is you're going to just be applying pressure and standing up taller and taller as you go up the jump. Now, if you can practice this on flat ground and time it, you can use what's called an English bunny hop or a level lift. Um, these are just very, very basic things. And you want to work on your timing and you want to work on repetition. Once you get to the place where you can do this move and get the get both tires up in the air ever so slightly, uh, then, then you've kind of gotten it to where it's a little bit of a muscle memory, so to speak. And the second thing you need to do is you need to be able to control the uh, trajectory of the drop of the front wheel. Now on a jump, when we're going up, the front wheel is going to come up to us and we need to wait into... We need to push into the jump. And when we're on a drop, what we need to do is either delay that drop by pushing the bike forward, or we need to kind of create a spring up by using that level lift move and then float the front wheel as a result of us pushing down. One or the other, kind of the same thing here. I know I'm covering jumps and drops at the same time, but you can handle it, right? So what we do by creating either the front delay on the drop or by creating the front to lift up when we're on a jump is we're actually projecting the trajectory we wanna go on before it happens, okay? So how you wanna do this is you want to notice how the body feels, especially in the torso. What direction are you moving? Where do you feel maybe weight or pressure in the body? Are you noticing any weight in your hands? Are you noticing any weight through your feet? 
What are some of the pressures that you feel? And this is really, really important. A lot of times what the uh, what instructors do is they put pressure control at the very tip top of the skill set. You have to apply pressure control whether you're doing very basic fundamentals or you're doing big drops. It's just the way it is. So when you work on this pressure control and how it feels to do this, you are going to take this and you're going to apply that to a principle called pre-ride, re-ride, and free ride. Now, pre-riding can be riding up to the jump or the drop and checking it out and getting a feel for the speed, but you stop before you do the feature. It can also be watching somebody else do it and paying attention to how fast they're going. It can also be you know, being towed in by a friend and letting them lead you and then you stop while they go and you just kind of watch how they do it. And the information you're trying to get is a visual. Now, for some of you, this is very easy. You can visualize what it might be like to go off of this drop and you can kind of picture to yourself, okay, this is how it would look if I did it. And for those of you that can visualize it pretty easily, frankly, it's not too hard. And for those of you that maybe struggle a little bit, that's why we added in the ground ground school step from earlier in the video that you can use to get that confidence and certainty of what to do right before you're about to send it into the air. And again, I, I want to say this again, the reason we pre-ride and re-ride and free ride is so that we give ourselves a chance to commit to the correct move on the takeoff. That way we don't put ourselves in the air moving in the wrong direction. When we're in the air, if you are rotating forward, you're going to keep rotating forward. There's laws of physics. For every object in motion, it tends to stay in motion unless stopped by the ground, which we don't want to be that guy, right? So once you've gotten the, the pre-ride phase down, which is getting that, okay, I can do this, I can see it, I can visualize it, or I've seen my buddy do it, I feel like I can copy that. Then we, what we want to do is we want to re-ride the situation. In other words, go back over, try running up to it a few times, get a speed, feel for the speed, make sure that you're good, do a couple speed checks. Then you can actually go and, and do the free ride step, which is sending it off of the jump or the drop. Now, remember what I said earlier about the torso plus two tire method? I actually made an entire video on the details of this, so I know I'm kind of skipping a few of the steps here. But what you generally want to do is you want to be able to initiate the jump or the drop where we put your torso exactly where you want it to be so that you have a controlled trajectory through the air and it aims you at the lander. So let's take a look here at this video I took of Lucas Shaw at, I believe it was the Nationals Downhill Championship at uh, Ride Rock Creek in 2023. And in this video, what you're going to see is something that's a little bit different. Now, this is a pretty decently huge jump, very high speed. And what I want to show you is actually instead of what we most of the time need to do, which is stand up very tall and pop off of a jump, I want to show you how Luca has body awareness enough to actually put his torso where it needs to be by soaking up the jump. Okay. Now, soaking up the jump, it's what it is. It's where we're coming in at either race pace or too fast for conditions. In other words, if you stood up the entire lip of the jump and you committed fully and you stood up, stood up, stood up and applied pressure, you would go so high in the air and so far that you would miss the lander or go too far past the lander. So obviously the main thing you want to avoid is getting compressed unless you want to soak up the jump. Now, this is where I want to go really deep on this. The first thing you're going to notice is Luca is coming into the jump is he's starting to preload his shocks all the way down here in the bottom of this pit in this in this kind of low part before the jump actually really starts. This is important if you have a very large, very fast jump because what we don't want to do is stand up tall and passively and then run into the launcher or the lip of the jump and then our shock gets compressed because what's going to happen next is you're going to get thrown over the bike absolutely hardcore. So what we want to do is we want to compress the shocks first by dropping the torso, second, by pushing through the feet primarily. Now, honestly, I don't know if Luke is pushing with his hands or not here. He's an elite athlete, and so he's basically going to be able to do whatever feels good for him. For me, I do push through my hands ever so slightly on a jump this size. Now, for you, you might find that it's a little bit more leg heavy. For you, you might feel a whole lot of G-forces through the arms. There's no right or wrong here. The key is you have to drop the torso down, then 
add pressure through the feet and or hands nice and evenly. And then what we want to do is we want to ride up the jump with even pressure control. Now, this is the part where it takes some experience, because if you're not going fast enough or if you're going just the right amount of speed to clear the jump, then what you need to do is you need to continue to stand up and then time your pop. In other words, time the maximum of extension of your body from uh, from your feet to your head and you're extending the most at the very lip of the jump at the very end of it. What that'll do is it'll give you the most amount of pop to send it over. But if you're like Luca right here and you're at race pace, you actually want to pick a time where you start to move the bike up the hill faster than the body. And what you're gonna notice here is that Luca uses, he kind of hides behind the bike and compresses right into it. And uh, what you're gonna notice with his elbows is really important here. Notice how his elbows come back all the way and his head is looking straight towards where he needs to land. This is giving him, I believe, the indication and kind of the feedback he needs from the trail itself that's telling him, okay, now is when I need to let the bike pop into the air. And this is a timing thing. So he's delaying using that pop until the very, very, very last second where he goes, okay, right here. Now that he's picked the timing is he's going to move the bike up and away from him. And he's going to just have his torso on this perfect trajectory and the bike is going to come under him and it's all easy peasy from here. Now, what's neat about this is if you put your, tra your torso on the correct trajectory, that's a tongue twister right there if you haven't heard one. If you do this, then what you're going to be able to do is just spot your landing. If you're a little bit turned to the left or right, you can just turn your head and you'll end up going where you need to go. If you are, if your bike is pointed off to one side or the other, you can use the gyroscopic effect to point the wheels in the direction you want to get stability. So it's, it's very, very easy once you've gotten to this point. Now, a final note about this is for a lot of us, um, we do want to land maybe a little bit nose heavy first. I get, I get a little bit of comments about this. I'm going to be very clear. If you land where your front tire can touch down ever so slightly in front of the rear tire, in other words, da -dun, like, I'm sorry, it's faster than that, that quick. What that does is it gives us a chance to make sure we don't land completely tail heavy. If you're tail heavy, a lot of times we get slapped down on medium and small size jumps. On a jump this size, where you have a very long and relatively flat compared to uh, the rest of everything, when you have a long lander like this, you can land with your back tire first, it's okay. You're probably not gonna crash because you land with your back tire first. So ultimately, if you want to, you can land both tires at the same time, or you can choose to land with the back tire first. Either way, you're going to be safe as long as your torso is on the right trajectory. And this is the thing that nobody talks about with jumping. It's if your torso is in the right spot, everything falls into place after it. You can wiggle the bike around. You can hit a brake. You can pedal in the air like some other riders do. I think this is Richie Rude right here. He's pedaling in the air. I don't know, either to shift gears midair or he's doing it because... He's a little bit, uh, you know, tail heavy here. Here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and scroll down below, write a comment about what technique you like to use and where your biggest transformation has come in jumping so far or what you're trying to work on right now with this. I wanna blow this video up. It's a lot of fun doing these things. And frankly here, like I said earlier on the, on the video, I'm on a mission to help a million riders shred with confidence. We've got a whole movement going on. We've had, 18,000 people subscribe in the past three months. We've had well over 100 riders join um, join our, our membership for our movement. And there's only one of me and there's millions of you. So if you can share this with a riding buddy or just share a comment that can help another rider out, go ahead and do that below. And what this will do is it'll just help build the movement. It'll help more people get more confident on bikes because mountain biking is harder than we are good at it. So write that comment below. Let us know what you think. And then I'll leave you with a final thought, a final tip about big jumps and drops. A lot of this comes down to, honestly, your body. And one of the keys here is that if you're doing big jumps and drops like this, you probably have some level of skill. And what happens, though, is sometimes our skill doesn't always run out. Sometimes it's actually our hip mobility and our hip strength. So things like the glutes, the quads, the hamstrings, just kind of the big muscles that we need in order to control the G-forces on the way up. So it's, it's inner in that we have to be able to handle the G-forces in order to do this. So a couple of things you can keep in mind is one is actually 
don't squat down too much. If we squat down as much as Luca is in this video, uh, some of us just don't have that crazy amount of leg strength that that maybe Luca does. And I, just being frank, I don't think I do for sure. And if I were to go out there and try to do this just like him, I'd be in trouble. So what you need to do is just be mindful of how it feels. Are you getting compressed or are you pressing into the pedals? If you're getting compressed, then it might be time to start doing some squats. It might be time to start doing some farmer carries. It might be time, time to start doing some, some exercises that lift heavy. And uh, usually I don't recommend just lift heavy unless it has to do with a lot of G-forces. And in this case, you gotta do a lot of G-forces. It's just the truth. Now, final word, if you've got the technique dialed, you get your torso in the right place, and you've got the hip mobility and the hip strength and everything around it is strong, the one thing that can still stop you that I wanna help you with right now is this concept of overcoming fear. Now, there is a school of thought in the mountain biking world that somehow still exists that if you just huck your meat, in other words, just jump it, and don't care, everything will work out because you'll crash and learn from it or, <laughs> or you'll succeed maybe. And uh, obviously there are some risks to that approach. And what I can tell you is that if you have mortgage brain, AKA any responsibility in life, then that may not be the best approach for you. In other words, it's not the best approach for you. So if you are, you know, middle-aged writer who sits at a desk quite a bit, Yes, work on those other things. Work on the technique, work on your body. It's very, very, very much a fitness related thing. The final part I would also address with you too is that the reasons we can feel fear around a jump of you know, a pretty big size or a drop of pretty big size is because your body doesn't trust itself. And this is something that no one really talks about. And I actually see this quite a bit. The reason why you don't trust your body is because your body knows that you can't actually do the move athletically. And how you know this is you've probably done jumps or drops like this size before, but when it comes to doing them now, you have this feeling in the back of your mind that something's a little bit off. It didn't feel quite the way that it used to, and you start noticing it's tension usually that you'll notice, and it's usually gonna be up here in the shoulders or in your breathing or in your core. So if you notice that coming into the drop, it's okay to hit the brakes and just stop and come back after you've built a little bit of strength, built a body you can trust. And it's totally okay to say, hey, I'm gonna build up to this. I do this quite a bit. There's a lot of drops and jumps that I just go, look, I'm, I'm just gonna go around it today. It'll be here tomorrow, it'll be here next month because we know that Nico's crew at Canuga is gonna do a good job, I trust them. So I trust the people who do a good job and I come back later when I'm ready for it. Now, the other thing too, is that if you are still running into these feelings of, of you're noticing the tension in your breathing or up here in your traps, then a lot of times um, you need to have a plan. You just need to have a plan. So what I would say to you, if you kind of feel those things that you notice, you know, in your shoulders and your breathing, the diaphragm of that tension, it's your body sometimes telling you, hey, you, you actually kind of can't do this the way that you used to, that's okay. What I would suggest is come up with a plan and come up with a plan that has to do with controlling the controllables and looking at all the variables. I suggest a three strike policy. Did you get a good night of sleep last night? In other words, how's my energy? Energy is the first one. If my energy is bad or I'm tired or my mind isn't focused, it's foggy. Energy, that's a strike. Second one is do I know what I'm getting into? and have I done it before? In other words, is this something I can recreate from a previous experience? Now, for some of you that are you know, snowboarders, skiers, motorcycles, something like that, and you go, yeah, I, I mean, this feels just like this thing I just did last season on the snowboard, then you can borrow from that. So that's the second one. But if you're looking at a feature, a big jump, a big drop, and you're just like, this feels totally foreign to me, that's strike number two. Now, frankly, if you have two strikes, I kind of think it's out. If you're feeling bad and it's foreign, that's enough for me to say, maybe next time I'll come back. Now there is a third strike as well. The third strike is when you can't visualize the outcome and feel it in your body. Now this one, if you, uh, maybe you're just getting into mountain biking and haven't done a lot of sports before, might feel like a bit of a stretch for you. Um, I've been, I played golf for forever when I was a little kid and I played high school football, and I rode mountain bikes right after that from age you know, 18 until now. So 
I have a lot of experience visualizing because a lot of the things that I would do on the golf course were I would make up my own courses. I would make trick shots up and I would visualize them until I got them in the, the ball in the hole. High school football, I don't think I was visualizing at all. I think I was getting hit in the head by bigger riders or uh, bigger players. <laughs> I, was, I, was, <laughs> I was 18. You didn't focus on anything then. And, and then with mountain biking, everything I rode, I had to build it myself with my friends. And so we, we got to not only visualize the feature, we built it with our hands and we spent hours, hours and hours making these things. And so we had a lot of references. So the third strike is if you have a lot of references, you're good. But if you don't have a lot of references to refer to, and if you can't visualize yourself doing it and feel what it would feel like to do the, the jump or the drop, that's strike number three and you're out. If all three of these are missing, you are asking for a tough time. Um, there, there have definitely been times when I've ridden off of a jump or a drop and three of those things were missing. I was tired. I, I remember at um, Mountain Creek Bike Park, there's a giant drop. I was tired. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, and I had never done a drop like that before because it was rocks and rocks and rocks, and then whew, you're sending it off, and it's 15 feet, 20 feet down. I had never done anything like it before. I made it down, and I was just fine. If I were to do that today, I would absolutely hit the brakes, turn around, and say, maybe another time. I'll even come back next year for this. And the reason why is because my goals are different. My goal back then was to hit everything at all costs. Don't be a wuss. Nowadays, it's don't not ride for a year because you were an idiot. So, <laughs> so what I'm, what I'm sharing with you is again, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're 18 years old, 16 years old, and you're just getting into riding, do whatever you want. But I like the three strike rule because it can help you eliminate a lot of just, you're getting in, past something you can pull out of and we don't want to we don't want to go there so just scroll down to the bottom let me know what you think in the comments hit the subscribe button and check out our membership we've got about 40 more enrollment spots left before i close at 150 to work on the product work on the community if that's interesting to you i'll see you on the next video peace